Jesus expressed the, the double commandment of loving God with all of your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. And then to love your neighbors yourself. But you know, we really can't love someone if we, we don't know that person. So how, how can we, how can we really get to know God? That's a good question. How can we get to know God? Well, I think we have to study who God is. It should be incumbent upon all of us to, to, to study the word of God. How often have you read the Bible, the Word of God? Maybe not, maybe not that much. Maybe as a result of this presentation that you're listening today on Facebook or YouTube, maybe God is, uh, is challenging you to go beyond where you're at and to get into the habit to start to read the word of God. Maybe God is challenging you to do that. You know, another thing that can help us to get to know God is, this came out in the early 90s during the pontificate of John Paul II, the great, under the supervision of Cardinal Ratzinger, and it is the, the catechism of the Catholic Church. How have you all read the Catechism of the Catholic Church? Catechism of the Catholic Church is a spiritual masterpiece. The Catechism of the Catholic Church can be divided into four basic blocks of information. Catechism of the Catholic Church has four pillars, and they are the dogmatic, the moral, the sacramental, and then the part on prayer. A word on each of those. The dogmatic part would be that of the, of the creed, that we pray at Mass every Sunday. I believe in God the Father Almighty, in which explains who God is, explains the Blessed Trinity, explains who the Father is, explains who the Son is and his two different natures, his human nature and his divine nature. So getting to know, getting to know not only the Bible, but the Bible explained in this spiritual masterpiece, which is the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Then the next part would be the moral part. Do you really know the Ten Commandments? The Catechism of the Catholic Church goes on to explain in great detail the Ten Commandments. How about the moral or cardinal virtues? Do you know what the moral or cardinal virtues are? Justice, temperance, prudence, and fortitude. How about the how about the Beatitudes that we read in Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 to 12? Blessed are the poor, blessed are the pure, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for holiness, blessed are the afflicted, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are those who uh, who um, who are persecuted for my sake? These are the these are the eight beatitudes. Maybe you don't know them. Pope Francis, in one of his last works, actually explained the the different beatitudes and how to live them out. And then you've got the sacramental part. You probably know the seven sacraments, but do you do you really understand uh, who instituted these sacraments? Uh, what is the biblical origin of these sacraments? Uh, how are these sacraments administered? Uh, who is the minister of the sacraments? What is the matter and what is the form of these sacraments? Uh, what, uh, uh, what is the disposition that we should have and receive in these sacraments? What, um, what are the effects of the sacraments? For example, every sacrament of the seven sacraments, they were instituted by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that's true. In the, in the context of the church, we have the sacraments. But are you aware of 
the fact that every sacrament communicates a specific sacrament of grace that differentiates it from the other sacraments. I'll give an example. The effect, the sacramental effect of confession is different than the sacramental effect of the Eucharist. Do you know the difference? The specific sacramental effect of confession is healing. Sin wounds our hearts. So sin is a wounding, it's, it's, it's being wounded. So confession heals of the, us of these wounds. What about the Eucharist? Secondarily, you can be healed by receiving the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. Yes, secondarily. However, the specific sacramental grace of the Eucharist is that of nourishment. So in the human body needs healing. We go to doctors and we take our medicine, but also the human body cannot live without proper nourishment. We die of malnutrition, as is sad to say very prevalent throughout the world. There are many places and countries where there's just not enough food for the people. But the, as the human body can die of hunger, so also the, the soul can be undernourished. It can suffer from malnutrition. You might even have a certain spiritual anorexia in our soul where we're not nourished as we should by the body and blood of Christ. And then you've got the, the moral part of the catechism. We, were, oh, we already mentioned that. But we have the last part of the catechism is on prayer. Do you know what prayer is? Do you know how to pray? Do you have biblical passages on prayer? Do you know prayer in the Old Testament? Do you know the prayer of Jesus? Do you know prayer in the New Testament? Do you know different methods of prayer? Do you know even something as simple as um, Catechism speaks about distractions in prayer. I think all of you who are following me now have gone through periods where you, you're praying and you get distractions. Maybe you've never stopped and to ask yourself, well, I am, I am distracted in prayer. That's true. But why is it that I have distractions? I think that's a good question. Catechism Catholic Church says that one of the reasons why we have distractions in prayer, we have a distraction that could be a manifestation of one of our disordered attachments or affections that has to be recognized, it has to be dealt with, and it has to be overcome. It might be this, say for example, you're, you're, you're doing your meditation and you're, you have some in your mind that, uh, that hurt you. And someone that really hurt you maybe, maybe a month ago, and that person is your mind. And you can't seem to get that person out of your mind. Then you take a step back and you think about it. Well, yeah, that person hurt me. And I haven't really forgiven that person. It's a work colleague, and I haven't talked to that person for a month, and I, I just don't like that person. I'm angry at that person. I would even like that person to suffer. I have a vindictive attitude of revenge. I want, to, I want that person to suffer. So God, the Holy Spirit, is bringing that to your attention so that you can recognize that you're holding on to resentment. You're not being merciful, and as a result of that, you're kind of floundering in no man's land. You're kind of like a, a gerbil or a hamster going around in that little wheel. Or maybe you're on a, on a spiritual treadmill where you're just walking, but you're never advancing at all. So, that, so what we've said in a kind of a long 
wended way is we're talking about while we're here. We're here to we're here to know God. We're here to love God. We're here to serve God. And by means of that, we're here to save our soul, to get to heaven. So man is created to know God, to love God, to serve God, and to get to heaven. When I teach catechism to the especially to the kids, I insist a lot upon the the importance of even making the hand gestures. We are here to know God, to love God, to serve God, and by means of that, to save our mortal soul. You might even try to, uh, to do a mime, to memorize the gestures if you're moms or dads. And if you like, in Spanish, it's just as easy. You can say, Estamos aquí para conocer a Dios, amar a Dios, servir a Dios, y mediante eso salvar nuestras almas. So if you're Spanish speaking, there you have it in Spanish. Estamos aquí para conocer a Dios, amar a Dios, servir a Dios, y mediante eso salvar nuestras almas. You know, I think we have to reflect upon that more. We really have to know the purpose of our existence while we're here where we're heading and how to get there. So going back to the first part of this talk that was momentarily broken up because of a, a bad internet, internet connection, if you're here just for the second part of my presentation, I, re, I, I, I call to mind what I, said, what I said at the beginning, in which all of us have had the experience where we've gone in the car with the purpose of arriving at a certain destination. And we thought we knew how to get there, but we really didn't. And what were you we doing? We were driving around circles and basically kind of like a chicken with its head, head coat off, going around in circles. And finally, we, we had enough courage to stop and ask someone on the street, and that person didn't give us proper direction. We maybe went to a gas station. That person kind of garbled something out, confused us even more. And we went back to our house. We found the Thomas Guide. Now we can use the GPS, which is the ele electronic map. There's a good idea for you. You have an electronic map. You've got your GPS. You know how to use your GPS, do you? Do you know how to use your GPS? You probably do. You just Google in, and then you place the, the address and the number, and then the Google map electronically, even vocally, can direct you properly to your destination. Kind of like that parallel. What about, what is your, what is your spiritual electronic Google map? Aha. Uh -huh. Your spiritual electronic Google map is what we've been talking about the past 15, 20 minutes. And it is why we're here. We are here. Remember this. You're here for a purpose. You're not here by chance. We don't believe in, in luck or chance. You're here for a purpose. You're here because God loves you. You're here because God brought you into existence out of his infinite love. You're here because God loved you. But you're here also as an act of love of God. You're here to, to know God, to love God, to serve God in this life so that you will be happy with him forever in heaven. It's as simple as that. So my friends, I'd like, before entering our conversation this afternoon, I'd like to give all of you a very special blessing. We as Oblates were in Boston now in a, in a simple an, uh, a, an assembly, a provincial assembly, I ask you to pray for us and for the close to 40 oblates in the American province. Pray for us that we'll really be able to uh, come together to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Pray for us as we pray for you. The Lord be with you. Through the intercession of Mary and St. Joseph and Father Bruno Lanteri, may God bless you in the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.